So we've got watches on the table from the last two model years, so they're all relatively recent. Mm -hmm. They're all special edition and pieces. All, and, and all across the brand spectrum. That's a fact. So why don't we open fire with one of our From the Vault editions? Why don't we go with the one that was chronologically first, because this watch came out in 2016. Go for it. So uh, we'll get a zoom in on the watch. So this right here is the Sapphire Crystal Case Hublot Chronograph. So this is actually the first iteration of the watch. It was a limited edition of, I believe, 500 pieces for the world. That's correct. And they were sold out immediately. So this watch has spawned numerous variations. You know, they've come out with the perpetual calendar. They've come out with different colors. But, you know, this was the watch that started it all. You have the quick justice strap, you know, that he just uh, showed there. And the watch came in at an, a very aggressive price point in the, in the 50s. Yes, and, and keep in mind, your frame of reference would be Richard Mill full sapphire case references that cost deep into six figures. And it was in some a million cases, dollar watch, I believe. In some I, think, cases, I, think it was like a, I think it was like a $1.1 million watch, something, something like that. But, you know, this was Hublot's answer. The watch did incredibly well. I think they really started off the, you know, they didn't, weren't the first on the sapphire crystal movement, but they really got things going where other people sort of, you know, followed suit. You know, the watch is absolutely beautiful. And, you know, for a watch on the wrist, you know, you know, while it's not inexpensive, you know, it definitely makes a statement. Again, if you're, you're talking about 1 20th the price of that first Richard Mill, also, it's worth mentioning that other brands that have done Sapphire have, prior to Hublot, tended to do it in monoblock fashion, which is both more difficult to repair if something breaks and more expensive to purchase up front. What I like about this watch is that it's almost an ironic statement. In crafting the entire watch from Sapphire with a gummy-style silicone strap, Hublot's created a watch that almost looks like a toy. Or, if you want to be a little bit more inside baseball, when a company comes out with a new movement that they really want to show off, many times they'll build a plastic or a, a, a thermoplastic display case and they'll send out these demonstrator models to their dealers. This watch looks like a demonstrator made of plastic to show off the movement. It's, it's almost like it's a thing not intended for retail and I love it. I love the fact that it almost thumbs its nose at Swatch saying, you know, we can put on a good freak show, we can do it for $50,000 and we can do it without compromising the quality of the watch. And that's a fact. This is a flyback chronograph. It's a 72 hour power reserve. It's a column wheel movement. It's their manufacturing. It's a fabulous movement. I mean, again, the Unico movement is a extremely high-end movement that's made extraordinarily well. And I think that this really shows Hublot's manufacturing prowess at its best, that they're able to take a concept and execute it at a you know, very aggressive price going into the market. Answering Watch Yoda, yes, the logo for Hublot is on the crystal of the watch. The only thing that threw me about this watch in the beginning was the strap, because it is a weird concept having like a clear strap, but I put on the other black straps and things that came with some of the other watches and nothing looks nearly as good as the, as the see-through strap. And I'll also say this, guys. If you're familiar with the vulcanized rubber Hublot straps, the series of translucent straps on the sapphire, first there was this, then there was the black, then came the fuchsia, then came the blue. All of those are silicone straps. So if you're familiar, I, I likened this almost to a swatch aesthetic. If you're familiar with the silicone gummy straps on a swatch, that's exactly what this is, which means, yeah, you'll probably get about two years out of it rather than the four to five you get out of a rubber strap, but it's also a lot more comfortable on the wrist. And with this strap architecture, it's super easy to just swap out to a new one when the time comes. And it's also a watch that I think is hard to appreciate the, you know, the finer details of it, seeing a photograph of it. Because when you're just looking at a picture of the watch, you know, it, it really doesn't come across as rich as it feels, you know, when you have it in your hands and you're looking at the you know, the finer points of, of the case construction and even into the movement. I'll, and I'll say this, that goes for every single one of the Sapphire Hublot models, whether colored or not. None of them look right in photos. They are impossible to photograph. Every single one of them impresses in person. Every and it's a full retail yeah. watch. I mean, again, the watch yeah. is, it's a full retail watch. The watch, even in the secondary market, is selling right at about, you know, full pop. So, you know, they still very much are in demand. And it's a watch that when it first came out for 500 pieces, they probably could have just as easily done 1,000 or 1,500 and sold just as much. So, um, and, and they discontinued doing it in this exact configuration in the chrono. So, you know, great watch.